In this video, we talk about mixed random variables. So, so far we have discussed two types of random variables, discrete random variables, as well as continuous random variables. So, we saw that a discrete random variable has a countable range, so the range is countable. So, it could be a finite range, or it could be like a set of natural numbers and so on. The range is countable, and we use probability mass function to analyze discrete random variables. For continuous random variables, the range was not countable, the range was always uncountable, and we use PDF to represent them to determine the distribution. For both of them, we could use CDF. CDF can be used for any types of random variable. Now, we want to talk about a third category, which is, which is the category of mixed random variables, which is basically a combination of both, that is, uh, it has a discrete part and a continuous part. And because we already know to how to deal with continuous and discrete random variables, we can basically analyze mixed random variables. So essentially, there is no need uh, for a new theory here. We can use uh, our knowledge that we have learned for discrete and continuous random variables to analyze mixed random variables. So let's look, look at an example to see how we can do this. So, suppose that you go to the bank and let x be the wait time until it is your turn. So, you might be lucky and there is no queue in the bank. So, your wait time until it is your turn is zero. So, let's assume that that happens with probability 1 over 3. Now, with probability 2 over 3, then there is a queue. And in that case, we know that x is exponential with parameter lambda equals 1 over 2. So we want to analyze this situation. So let's see. Maybe we can model this problem like this. I have a coin for which probability of heads is equal to 1 over 3. So it looks like I'm tossing that coin with probability 1 over 3. The result is heads. In that case, the wait time is 0. Or the outcome is tails. In that case, you know, x is equal to y, where y is an exponential random variable with parameter lambda equals 1 over 2. So that's, it looks like we can model our problem like this. Okay, so what kind of random variable is this x here? Well, first of all, probability that x is equal to 0 is 1 over 3, right? So definitely, this is not a continuous random variable. So this is not continuous x is not a continuous random variable. Why? Because for continuous random variables, probability of x equals anything, you know, any real value, was zero. Remember, if there is, if the probability is non-zero, that means that there is a jump in the CDF. The CDF is not continuous, so the random variable is not a continuous random variable. So because probability of x equals zero is uh, larger than zero here, in this case, is equal to one over three, this is not a continuous random variable. So, also, when we look at here, x is not discrete either. Because if you think about the range of x, what is the range of x? x could be any real value larger than 0, right? If, uh, you know, the result of the coin toss is tails, then x is an exponential random variable, which, uh, you know, for which the range is all positive real numbers. Okay, so, the, so we conclude x is not discrete either. So this is not a discrete random variable because its range is not a countable set. So what is it? It's a mixed random variable. So how we do we, how, how do we analyze x? Well, let's think about it. Let's find its CDF. Note that CDF can be defined for any random variable. Discrete, continuous, and mixed. So let's find fx of x, CDF of x. Well, so this is, by definition, probability that x is less than or equal to x. Now, we know that the range of my random variable is this set, so I immediately conclude that this is 0 if x is less than 0. So I only need to find it for uh, positive values. For x greater than, uh, than or equal to 0, what do, we, what do I have? Well, if x of x is probability that x is less than or equal to x. But I have two cases. You know, 
the result of my coin toss is either heads or tails. What do I use here? Yes, I use the law of total probability. I can say that this is equal to probability that x is less than or equal to x, given that the outcome is heads times probability of heads plus probability that x is less than or equal to x, given that the outcome is tails times probability of tails. So this becomes probability that x is less than or equal to x, given that the outcome is heads. Probability of heads is 1 over 3 plus probability that x is less than or equal to x, given tails, times probability of tails, which is 2 over 3. Okay. Now, if the outcome is heads, then I know that x is going to be 0, right? So what's the probability that x is less than or equal to x? Given that I know uh, x, the random variable x is equal to 0, note that this is a positive value, or you know, at least you know, larger than or equal to 0. So this probability is going to be 1, right? Because I already know that x is uh, 0. How about this one? probability that x is less than or equal to x given that the outcome is tails. When the outcome is tails, it means that uh, x is equal to y, which is an exponential random variable with parameter lambda equals 1 over 2, which means that probability that x is less than or equal to x is equal to probability that y is less than or equal to x. And because it's exponential with parameter lambda equals 1 over 2, uh, this is going to be 1 over my 1 minus e to the minus uh, 1 half um, x. Of course, x is larger than or equal to 0. So that's the CDF for an exponential random variable with parameter lambda equals 1 over 2. Okay, so we conclude if x of x is equal to 1 over 3 plus 2 over 3, 1 minus e to the minus 1 over 2x. This is true for positive values of x and 0 for x less than 0. Okay, so we, we were able to find a CDF. Now let's plot this CDF and see how it looks like. If this is x, and uh, let's see. For values less than 0, it's going to be 0. Then what happens at x equals 0? At x equals 0, it's going to be 1 over 3, right? Because this term is going to be, the second term is going to be 0 and the value is just 1 over 3. So we jump to 1 over 3. And then after that, you know, we have this exponential 1 minus e to the minus lambda 2x. In, in particular, as x approaches infinity, this term goes to infinity. So basically, the second term goes to, uh, you know, 1. So 2, three, 2 over 3 times 1 becomes 2 over 3, and the whole thing goes to 1. So basically, I have something like this. And that's what we expect, right? The CDF must approach 1 as x goes to infinity. So that's how my CDF looks like. Okay? So as you see, again, this figure also suggests that this is a mixed random variable. It is not uh, disc a discrete random variable because the CDF is not in the form of a staircase. Remember, for discrete random variables, the CDF is like this, right? You know, a staircase function. It is not a continuous random variable because we have a jump. The CDF is not a continuous uh, function. So it's a mixed random variable. X is a mixed random variable. And note that the value of the jump here is 1 over 3. That's the probability that X is equal to 0. Now, because I have the CDF, I can find probability of X between any two numbers that I want, larger than A and less than or equal to B. So if I, you know, I ask you what's the probability that x is larger than 0 and less than or equal to 1, this is fx of 1 minus fx of 0, right? Remember that in general, we have probability that x is larger than a, less than or equal to b is equal to fx of b minus fx of a. Okay, so what is fx of 1? If x of 1, we just put 1 in this x here, so I obtain 1 over 3 plus 2 over 3, 1 minus e to the minus 1 over 2 times 1. And what is f x of 0? Note that f x of 0 is not 0. If x of 0 is 1 over 3. That's very important because there's a jump at 0. So it's 1 over 3. So that probability becomes 2 over 3, 1 minus e to the minus 1 half. 
So basically, using this formula, we can find the probability uh, that x belongs to any interval. We just look at if I have it just if it's one interval, we just look at it if this is b, this is a. You know, probability that x is larger than a, less than or equal to b, is simply fx of b minus fx of a. And if I have a bunch of non-overlapping intervals, then I can just add the probabilities. Now, if I ask you, let me just revise this question. If I ask you what is the probability that x is larger than or equal to 0 and less than or equal to 1, how do I solve this? Well, my formula only gives me the probability that x larger than 1 and less, larger than 0 and less than or equal to 1. But I can easily write this if I add probability that x equals to 0, then these two are equal, right? So I can write this, this is at equal to fx of 1 minus fx of 0 plus probability that x is equal to 1 over 3. So this is our previous probability that we found. This is here. And this probability that x equals 0 is just 1 over 3. So this becomes 1 over 3 plus 2 over 3 times 1 minus e to the minus one half. Okay, so we can find any probability that you want. How about the expected value of x? How do I find the expected value of such a random variable? Well, that's similar. I can write this as expected value of x given that the outcome was heads times probability of heads plus probability of x given tails times probability of tails. Uh, this is uh, called uh, the law of total uh, expectation, and we will discuss that more in detail later on. But for this case, we can just apply it here. Again, it's going to be 1 over 3 expected value of x, given that the outcome is heads, plus 2 over 3 expected value of x, given that the outcome is tails. Now, if the outcome, you know, my contest results in heads, x is equal to 0, so its expected value is 0, so it becomes 1 over 3 times 0, plus 2 over 3. If the outcome is tails, then x is exponential with parameter lambda equals 1 over 2, and we know that for an exponential random variable, maybe I just stated here, it's good to know these things. If I, if I have an exponential random variable with parameter lambda, then expected value of x is equal to 1 over lambda, expected value of x squared is 2 over lambda squared, and variance of x is equal to 1 over lambda squared. So this is good to know. So I was just uh, found finding the expected value of x. So 2 over 3 times expected value of x given that the outcome is tails. If the outcome is tails, then x is exponential with parameter lambda equals 1 over 2. So its expected value is 1 over 1 over 2, which is 2. So it becomes 4 over 3. Okay, how about the variance of x? Well, variance of x is equal to expected value of x squared minus e of x squared. So we found this. This is 4 over 3. So this is equal to expected value of x squared minus 4 over 3 squared. Now, expected value of x squared can be obtained using the similar method. So basically, this is equal to expected value of x squared given that the outcome was heads times probability of heads plus the expected value of x squared given that the outcome was tails times probability of tails. Probability of heads is 1 over 3, probability of tails is 2 over 3, x given heads is going to be 0, so this is 0, and given tails, x is going to be exponential with parameter lambda equals 1 half. So we conclude that the expected value of x squared uh, given tails is, as we saw here, is 2 over lambda squared, so this is going to be 2 over 1 over 2 squared, which is 8. So this is equal to 0 times 1 over 3 plus 8 times 2 over 3. So the variance becomes, uh, sorry, expected value of x squared becomes 16 over 3. So the variance of x is going to be 16 over 3 minus 4 over 3 squared, 16 over 3 minus 16 over 9, and that becomes 32 over 9. Okay, so that's the variance of x.
So here we use this uh, coin toss interpretation heads or tails to solve this problem, but in fact it's not necessary to do that. We can provide a general methodology to find expected value and variance of mixed random variables. So in particular, uh, you know, let's go back to our example. Uh, if you remember the CDF was given by this form, so it's 1 over 3 at 0 and then it goes exponentially. Uh, basically 2 over 3 1 minus e to the minus 1 half x to the x and then you know plus 1 over 3 this 1 over 3 here now this cdf we can write it uh, as a summation of two different functions i call it d of x and c of x now d of x in fact refers to the discrete part of the cdf and c of x refers to the continuous part of the cdf remember the cdf for discrete random variables was in the form of a staircase function so we can think of this uh, function on the left as a cdf of a discrete random variable the only difference here is that the cdf this is not a complete cdf because it, it doesn't approach one as x goes to infinity right it goes up to 1 over 3 and the one on the right can be, it looks like a CDF of a continuous random variable again it doesn't go to 1 the maximum value as you know as x goes to infinity it approaches 2 over 3 so what I can do is that okay I say that well this refers to the continuous part I can take its derivative you know let's call it lowercase c as d dx of c of x which becomes uh, basically 2 over 3 times uh, if you just yeah uh, 1 over 2 e to the uh, minus 1 half x and this becomes 1 over 3 e to the minus 1 half x for positive values of x okay now I can think of it as like it's, uh, the PDF for the continuous part now when I want to find the expected value of my mixed random variable I can write it as a combination of two terms the discrete part term and the continuous part term for discrete random variables remember the uh, expected value formula was xk times p x probability that x is equal to xk and for the continuous part it was the integral of the c uh, you know x fx of x dx and here uh, our pdf is going to be cx Dx. Again, this is not a valid PDF because it does not integrate to 1, but it's just a part of the PDF. Okay, so I am claiming that we can use this formula to find expected value of mixed random variables. So, so let's do it here. For here, the only discrete part was x, uh, the probability that x equal to 0 was equal to 1 over 3. So I can write expected value of x, it's 0 times probability of 0, 1 over 3, plus the integral part. The integral is integral from 0 to infinity x and c of x was up you know we obtained it as 1 over 3 e to the minus 1 half x dx so this becomes well I can write this as 2 over 3 integral from 0 to infinity x 1 half e to the minus 1 half x dx why do I write it like this because this is a PDF of an exponential random variable with parameter lambda equals one half. Uh, so this, the whole thing is that ex is the expected value of an exponential random par variable with parameter one half. So um, it's going to be one over lambda, which is two. Okay. So we obtain expected value of x is equals four over three. This is the same answer that we obtained previously, right? You know, we found it using this heads or tails argument 4 over 3 but what I'm claiming here is that we can just use this general formula so if I'm giving you a CDF of a mixed random variable you will be able to write it as a discrete part plus a continuous part and you can write, obtain the expected value uh, using this formula similarly for the expected value of x squared we can write it as sigma xk squared probability that x is equal to xk plus the integral from minus infinity to plus infinity x squared cx dx okay so today we talked about mixed random variables and we saw that we can analyze mixed random variables using the knowledge that we have regarding discrete and continuous random variables so we really didn't need a new theory next time we will talk about uh, how we can analyze 
mixed random variables using delta function. So the delta function sometimes uh, makes the analysis of mixed random variables simpler, but in fact it's not necessary. So we can analyze mixed random variables without the delta function. It just uh, sometimes is uh, more convenient to use the delta notation. And we will talk about it next time. Okay, thank you.